This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Ruhr Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are back in Oslo and Nebnes, and behind me here we have Tesla Model 3 Long Range. This is the one with the heat pump with the uh, chrome delete, and it has supposedly the 82 kilowatt hour Panasonic battery. And uh, this car, on spe by specification, it's supposed to do. Uh, 614 kilometers according to VLTP yeah just like BMW VLTP BMW you know and uh, big shout out to Marcus Bill for lending me the car so today we're going to do range test oh man and let me so show you it, it's just stock uh, 18 inch Michelin Pilot Sport 4 TO it says even yeah uh, everything is stock well, except for that uh, he tinted the rear window but I don't think it would matter too much for heat rejection and this one is still original so he only tinted this one for the looks and what else yeah, yeah okay and also a small detail I don't think also it matters too much I have this one Evonex heat shield that's it and we are charging now supercharging uh, the, the, the disadvantage by charging up like this, which is kind of rare, weird case is that we are charging the car, we are fast charging it to 100%. And that means that the battery, I can show you here, uh, you see that here, the battery is at 48.5 degrees. So it means that once we start driving, it's going to spend a little bit of extra energy cooling down the battery. In more common cases, you will start from home and then the battery will be at uh, 30 degrees. So that's a small disadvantage. The advantage we have today though is that it's 27 degrees outside and there's almost no wind. But oh man, it's so nice to use a snappy infotainment again. Look at this, look at this. Okay, yeah, so we'll be driving here as usual. We just have to wait for the car to finish to 100%. Uh, yeah, now it's doing the whole thing. And one other thing I want to show you is, uh, you see here, oh, 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 oh. down there, 76.2 kilowatt hour. That's the, the, what the car estimates as usable capacity from 100% down to 0%. That's the one we're going to be measuring. There is a 3.6 kilowatt hour buffer uh, below zero, but we will not use that one. So now we just wait and see. And yeah, <laughs> now it just says calculating as always. We're done, D-U-N, but right now the car is putting four kilowatts from the battery. We better hurry, but look how usable remaining, 76.5 kilowatt hour. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's check the weight. Front axle. 1,000. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, 1,000, okay. The whole car. 1,940, oh, okay, okay. Right, and Mjolsen today is quite calm. Almost no wind. This is a perfect condition today. Almost no wind and 24 degrees Celsius sunny it's partly cloudy it's just <laughs> perfect so i have to cruise at 92 kilometers per hour on speedo yeah consumption seems a bit high now even though we've gone downhill and i suspect that the cooling is uh, running a little bit aggressive right now but uh, soon enough maybe in 10 15 minutes it should uh, calm down we have been driving for one hour and we just turn around at the rutsagdal now we're heading back again and consumption so far is 142 hmm it's a little bit higher than expected and the first uh, thought was no wait, no here 3.1 bar uh, it's not that high or low it's normal yeah this is normal tire pressure so uh, the the standard range plus will be averaging around 125 if I remember correctly yeah, yeah. so this car hmm or, you know, it could be that it was cooling down the battery initially. 
Yeah, yeah. So we just have to see. We have to drive far enough. Well, no, no, it's doing the little brake slowdowns here. Okay, very annoying in the new stretch. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we have done 90 kilometers. This is going to take a long time. <laughs> Yeah, let me see. I think we're getting close to uh, Chris Tower soon. Yeah, it's Mio's Torna, and uh, <laughs> the people in the live stream they always call it the Chris Tower because they also watch Chris Rifa's channel. And every time he passes here, he always talks about the the nice hotel and the tower. Is it? There, there you go, there you go, there you go to the to right there, the Chris Tower. <laughs> it's a wooden. Uh, it's uh, supposedly uh, no. No, it's Northern Europe's tallest wooden uh, structure or something. Yeah. Okay, let's check for uh, distance error. So we draw to the north. We draw here. I mean, south mean and back again. So it means that uh, a full loop now should be right around this bridge. It should be 182 kilometers. Here. It's 183.2. Oh! Okay, 1.2 uh, kilometer over reporting. Okay, we have to calculate the uh, error based on that. We have been driving for three hours now, non stop. That is very impressive because I haven't peed yet. But look at the numbers here, guys. We are down to 49%. And um, we have done 200, uh, 280 kilometers. So it seems like we should be able to drive only 550 kilometers whoa we're missing uh, 60 kilometers here huh. well i know that um, if you use the, the the buffer below zero you can drive another 25 kilometers but that's still far away from the claim 614 uh, kilometers and you see it's even 27 degrees outside today and we have almost no wind this is perfect driving condition i was expecting 600 today but um not today son all right we have hit 500 kilometers well so actually we have about 0.6 percent error so at 503 kilometers it will be 500 kilometer real distance well uh, whatever so we have 12 percent left it's 26 degrees celsius and you see now the consumption has dropped to 135 so actually if you check here you see that it could look like we are hovering around 125 only in the evening. So I, I can't explain why the consumption now is lower than before. Well, the only explanation I have is that now the sun is not that strong. So let's say if we have um, 500 watts of lower power needed for cooling the car, then 500 watts when you're traveling at 90 kilometers per hour, actually uh, equivalent to 5.5 uh, watt hour per kilometer so maybe earlier today it was so hot that <laughs> it was a disadvantage but now we are right in the sweet spot where uh, yeah where the, the consumption is the lowest something like that so yeah i'm going to drive another 50 kilometers i guess but you see there is no way we're going to go 614 yeah <laughs> so um the vltp range of tesla mm, how realistic is it mm. we have arrived at nebenes and uh, we managed to drive okay according to the trip 561.2 kilometers consumption was 135 and by the end 26 okay stats and look here so we arrive with 1% left. Yeah, that's deep enough, but you see, we still have 102 kilowatt power limit. Uh, the car, say, it, it claims 0.8 kilowatt hour left. I think that's plausible. We can trust it. But below zero, we have another 4.4. I mean, it's 3.6 kilowatt hour below zero again, but we don't count it. So now I'm going to charge and then we do the high speed test. All right, 125. Oh, come on. Afterburners are actually off. You can see it here. Oh, shit. Uh, Afterburn. Okay, sure. Here, here. No battery heating is going on. 46 degrees Celsius in the pack. Ooh. Okay, nice charging speed. But we have to test charging speed at um, uh, V3 tonight. 
All right, we are now on the high speed run, 120 kilometers per hour. And uh, hmm, I have to say, you know, this car also feels uh, more quiet than the previous generation. You know, the classic uh, Model 3s like MC Hammer. I get the impression it's more quiet. It's not just because of the, the tarmac. It seems like it has the similar soundproofing as the, the Made in China Standard Range Plus. So uh, yeah, I will find out more about this once I do the actual um, uh, noise test. But my impression after driving this car all day is that uh, it sounds more quiet, more dampened. The, the noise from the road sounds more um, like like we have more lower frequencies and the higher frequencies seems to have been blocked out which is more pleasant to listen to so it sounds more German yeah just like with a China car we are back at Nebenes and uh, let's take a look at the total result now so in the 90 test we were able to drive 563 kilometers okay it was nice and hot um, and then uh, the consumption corrected is then 136 watt uh, per kilometer it was at 0.6 percent over reporting uh, but then i estimate that uh, we have 76.5 kilowatt hour really nice but you see uh, we didn't get 614 kilometers uh, in order to get that uh, range we have to uh, the consumption needs to be as low as 150 125 watt hour per kilometer or if you drive past zero, but there's a little bit of buffer past zero, but okay, whatever. But okay, another 120 test, we can drive 422. So these are really impressive numbers. Not many cars can, can actually go more than 400 kilometers in the 120 test. I mean, most cars, they will go 400 kilometers in the 90 test. So this is really impressive numbers nonetheless. Um, but yeah, okay, and then uh, why was this one, like, why did we not get uh, 614 kilometers? Well, the VLTP is a different test cycle. It's not based on highway driving only. That's one reason. And then I think in the VLTP or the EPA, or I'm not sure how that works, but maybe they are driving until the car stops and we are not, and we have around 3.6 kilowatt hour below zero. That's the way Tesla chose to do it. So. I actually don't know why but yeah but still you know this car has so good range and so long range that it still doesn't matter but it still makes me wonder when i did the test with the i call it the classic one in america i also achieved uh, 100 and uh, 560 kilometers but then the consumption was lower it was only 125 watt hour per kilometer but i had more traffic back then and i think the average speed over there was not as high as here so uh, that's the only explanation i have but yeah okay so anyway i think that's going to be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later